Hello and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to start building out the ARC ETF holdings database. Uh, by this point, if you haven't already, you should be already familiar a little bit with TimescaleDB from the first video and Postgres and some of the reasons why it's a good idea to use them. And also you should have Docker up and running with a Postgres database already created because at this point we're gonna jump right into uh, designing a relational database. So I'm gonna sketch it out on the iPad that you just saw there. Uh, we're going to design the relationships and the columns and tables in the database. And then we're going to proceed to write some SQL to create those tables inside of our ETF database. And following that, we're going to write some Python code to uh, populate the stocks that go into these tables and some Python code to parse the CSV files on a daily basis from the ARC uh, funds site and populate the holdings and the percentage of each of those holdings in the database over time. And I'm going to show you some SQL you can write to uh, do some basic analysis of this data to see if we can uh, drive some insight on uh, what, what ARC Funds is doing right now, what ARC Invest is doing right now. So uh, let's go ahead and get started with designing the database. All right, look at me all fancy with my Apple Pencil. And I have this nice empty canvas on the iPad where we can fill it up with a nice database diagram that we'll use for our project. All right, so uh, the first thing we're gonna do is create a few tables. So I like to think about the different tables that we'll need for each of our applications. So um, in this case, I showed you we need a stock table. So I draw a little box there and I'm going to write the word stock there, right? And so that's one of our tables. And we'll also need a, a, a way to store our ETF. So one way we could do that, you know, technically we could create an ETF table, right? An exchange traded fund. And each of these funds holds a number, one or more stocks, right? Usually about 10, 100, S&P 500, uh, SPY ETF uh, stores, you know, 498 to 502 stocks, however many are in it at the moment, right? So an ETF holds a number of stocks, right? An ETF has a number of holdings, and then later we'll end up uh, creating a stock price table as well, right? Stock price, because each of these stocks will have uh, prices over time, right? And so, um, in a way, an ETF is a stock, though, in this case, because a symbol like ARCG is actually just a stock that you can trade. So technically, we don't actually need uh, an ETF table. So uh, we could make one uh, if we want to, but in this case, I'm going to treat an ETF like another stock, right? And so what is in the stock table? Let's just talk about a simple uh, table first. And so I have uh, one table here. Uh, that I'm calling a stock, right? And what are the attributes of a stock? So if you went through the full stack trading app tutorial, we've already designed a database similar to this, but we didn't uh, keep track of ETFs, right? And so the first thing we need is some type of primary key. And so um, I didn't use the symbol, even though each symbol is usually unique, but I talked about some reasons why you'd want an ID that's independent of the stock symbol. So we're calling the ID uh, the primary key, right? And this is just a number that increments one, two, three, four, right? And so forth. It uniquely identifies a record in the stock table, right? Um, and then what else does a stock have? What are some other properties of a stock? And this might be really obvious to some people, but uh, for some others, it isn't. So we're just going over this in order. So each stock has a symbol right? That's a column in our a stock table. And so that's just a string or a text field. So in Postgres, you can just store a regular text field. And that'll just automatically, it's similar to a, uh, a character varying, there's a character varying type or a varchar type 
in uh, MySQL if you're familiar with that, but you can actually just use uh, text fields in Postgres. It'll handle it. And then each stock will just have a name and that's also just a piece of text. So the symbol would be like ARC-G, the full name would be uh, the ARC uh, Genomics Innovation Fund or whatever they call it, right? Um, the other thing we store, we usually store the exchange. Um, that's what we did in the full stack tutorial. Um, and I also use just a text field for that. Technically you can make a whole another table for exchanges, but uh, that's not really the focus of this particular series. So exchange is just text is, is, is fine. Um, and then uh, the other field we can have is is ETF. So either we could create a separate ETF table or I can just mark a stock and say whether it's an ETF or not, right? And so I'm just gonna do a Boolean. And so a stock like Apple would be in here is ETF would be false. And so let's do a couple of examples of records that would go um, in here. So we have a stock table and that table is gonna have a number of rows, uh, stock number one, ID one might be uh, AAPL, uh, Apple would be the name, uh, an exchange for that NASDAQ. Um, and then is ETF would be false, uh, but also we would have number two, and maybe that's ArcG, uh, you know, Arc Genomics, um, Arca or something, NYSE, Arca, and then that would be true, right? And so there's just a number of rows. So we have a number of stocks that go in the stock table, right? And then, so how do we represent uh, an ETF holding? So what we can do is create this additional table and we'll just call it ETF holding. And what we'll do here is we're gonna make a, a compound primary key here. So each ETF holding will reference an ETF ID so ETF ID, and this is a foreign key. And then we'll also have a holding ID. And both of these are actually just references to stocks, right? So I'm gonna do holding underscore ID, and that's a foreign key. And what we can do here is this ETF ID references just a stock, and also the uh, holding ID uh, also references a stock. And so, uh, what we'll have is a record like uh, ETF ID would be uh, two, for instance. So two, right? And then let's pretend there's another stock in our table called CRISP, CRSP, CRISPR Therapeutics, right? CRISPR, and that's a gene editing company, okay? And that's another stock, right? And so we can say ARCG uh, which is uh, ETF ID number two, right? So ETF ID number two, and then we can say that has a another holding, one holding of uh, stock three, right? And then we could have another record, right? That's ETF ID two and then holding four, and let's say stock number four was uh, edit, right, which is another stock that's in that ETF, there's uh, Regeneron and so forth, right? And so there's a row for for this ETF, uh, ArcG, right? This is ArcG and it has a holding of CRISP, ArcG with a holding of Edit, ArcG with a holding of Teladoc or whatever other holdings are in that ETF. And so this ETF holding uh, table is pretty useful as is because we could just get all of the holdings for a particular ETF and by referencing this stock table, we can get the name of the ETF, right? The ones that's an ETF. So we can get RG, and then we can get that it holds uh, CRISP and edit and whatever other stocks we decide to populate there, right? And so that's nice. We can see uh, what uh, symbols are in an ETF. I could build an API saying, uh, show me all this, the stocks in an ETF. And that's great, but our goal here with Timescale DB is to keep track of time series data. And so we're interested in data that uh, is more valuable if we track how it changes over time. And so the magic here is we just add a time field and we can call it DT, and that's a date time or just a date. And so I'm just gonna start very simple with just a plain date. So there's nothing really magical about a time scale in this particular case. You could do this with just uh, plain Postgres, just a date field. And so you see how 
this data instantly becomes more valuable uh, when we add a date field here because we can say we can have a record here for uh, January 25th, right? January 25th, and for each of these, and then I can start a record for January 26th, January 27th, right? And I could add some extra attributes like the number of shares, um, and which would be a numeric value. And then I could also say uh, the percentage of the portfolio or the percentage of the holding, and that's a numeric field as well, right? And so if I track that over time and we notice, oh, ARK, holding, Arc uh, Invest in a particular ETF, uh, for some reason they're adding CRISP or NNOX or uh, Palantir or one of these companies, they're continuing to accumulate shares and making it a greater percentage of uh, this particular ETF, then they must see a lot of value in that stock. And if we believe in Kathy Wood, as a, a fund manager that what she's making smart decisions, then we can be like, oh, well, if she sees value and in, in is adding this stock as a disruptive, innovative company, then us as investors, maybe we wanna just buy uh, that particular uh, stock that was added to one of these ETFs or one where she's increasing the holdings. And likewise, if she drops a stock, which happens if she drops a stock uh, from one of these ETFs or reduces uh, her holdings, then maybe uh, we want to do the same. So if you believe uh, this fund is doing a good job, you know, it might guide some of your investment decisions and you see how tracking this fund over time is more valuable than just showing what it has in the present. Uh, we can see how it evolves over time. So uh, in addition to uh, tracking the stocks that we'll, we'll, we will load, so we're gonna load this table with a uh, data a full list of stock symbols from the Alpaca API, or you can use whatever. I have some data sets that I provide in GitHub uh, that you can check out as well, and you could load it from there uh, also. And then, so we'll populate this stock table and we'll populate the ETF holdings based on the CSVs that we download from the ARC Funds website, right? And so what we can do is schedule a job to download those CSVs on a daily basis, populate these ETF holdings and the shares and the weight in the ETF and monitor those changes in the ARC ETF uh, funds over time, right? And so in addition to this, uh, to take more advantage of Timescale DB, what we're gonna do is create a stock price table as well. Similar to what we did in the full stack tutorial, uh, we're going to create a stock price table and each stock price will reference a, a stock ID which will just be one of these. And so we can track the chart, the uh, price of Apple stock over time. And so each uh, stock price uh, row will have a date time. And so we'll have a record like uh, Apple, which is stock one, and we'll have its price from January 21st, or January 25th, uh, 2021, blah, blah, blah. And then we'll have a stock ID one of January, 25th at you know 9 a.m., 10 a.m., and so forth. And so we can choose different uh, time intervals that we want to use, right? And so what we're going to do is download uh, minute candlestick data, like five minutes. I think we'll just use five minute candlestick. So we'll have one of these records for Apple stock for every single uh, five minute interval. And what we're going to do is use the time scale DB analytics functions. And even though we have data over the five minute time frame, what we can do is uh, use timescale database functions to uh, aggregate those five minute uh, bars or candlesticks into 30 minute bars or uh, one hour bars or roll them up and aggregate them so that we can see you know, the open, high, low, close of Apple uh, on the daily chart, for instance, right? And so uh, rather than storing all these different increments of data, we can store the low level uh, five minute candlesticks or one minute candlesticks and then generate whatever uh, aggregation we want of that particular data set uh, and serve it up, right? And so, uh, so yeah, so we'll have a stock ID, uh, we'll have a date time, we'll have a field for open, high, low, close as usual, uh, and volume. And so we'll look at some uh, volume patterns. Uh, and yeah, so, We'll have that, and those are all just numeric 
values in Postgres. So numeric all the way down, right? And then the primary key in this case, uh, how you identify a record is by the stock ID in conjunction with the date time, right? And so for the stock ID, I can look up uh, the price of Apple at a particular uh, date time stamp. So at 8.55 a.m. on January 25th, that refers to one particular record, and I can see the open, high, low, close, and volume of that particular uh, bar. And so we're gonna have a, a compound primary key that uses the uh, stock ID uh, and the date time, and then also uh, the stock ID is just a foreign key to the stock table. And it's a little past 10 p.m. over here right now, so I'm a little bit tired, a little sluggish right now, so I realize it's kind of dragging on, so I'm gonna stop it here, and I promise the next video is just gonna be all coding, so I'll do uh, the SQL to create the tables, and I'll write the Python code to populate the tables and start writing some SQL to uh, analyze some of the data. So uh, that's it for this video, this is just uh, basic database design and discussion of how to lay out this uh, ETF database. Uh, stay tuned for the next video and we'll start writing some code. Uh, thanks a lot.